I can name four reasons, at the very least, that Eggs Benedict is a restaurant brunch favorite. You've got your creamy poached egg, your seared bacon, toasty bread, and it's all under a blanket of rich, buttery hollandaise. Mm -hmm. And those four reasons are also reasons you don't want to make it at home. True. Hollandaise can be tricky. Poaching eggs, very tricky. And if you're going to make it, you're making it for a crowd. And poaching eggs and hollandaise and making all that toast, that's a handful. Yeah, and you got to be super organized. Yes. So. Which I'm not. <laughs> but we solved the problem. We made a foolproof hollandaise and a really great way to poach eggs and a way to do it all for a lot of people for breakfast. Sounds great. So we're going to start with the hollandaise, one of the trickiest of sauces. So hollandaise, like a mayonnaise, is an emulsion. And it starts with yolks, and this is four large egg yolks. Traditionally, you'd put this over a double boiler, and you'd whisk and whisk, and you'd pour in melted butter very slowly to make that emulsion. Some people do it in the blender. The blender, obviously, the blades run very fast, making it a little more foolproof. Sure. We found the best way is actually not to use melted butter at all, to use softened butter. This is already still in its emulsion, so the sauce doesn't break. It comes together like a dream. That was a stick of softened butter, and what's going to help us emulsify it is boiling water. Now, this water just came to a boil. I'm going to measure out a third of a cup, and this is going over the double boiler. I mean, this is a game changer. It's a huge, huge change in hollandaise. How many hollandaise do you think you've broken? Oh, a lot, actually. You know, in a lot of restaurants, I hate to say it, but their secret is using powdered hollandaise. Oh, and you can taste that. Yeah, you sure it's can. It's terrible. Now, usually, they just use a tablespoon or two of hot water. This is a whole third of a cup, so it's a bit more, but it makes a very light, fluffy hollandaise. So you can see there's chunks of butter in there. It's looking like it's not going to come together at all. Watch this magic. A little bit of water, stir it up. That water starts to melt the butter nice and slowly so that butter doesn't come out of an emulsion. It just binds so nicely with the yolks. And of course, this is over a double boiler, so that water underneath isn't touching the bowl, and it's at a bare simmer. It's just gently cooking the sauce through. We're going to cook this until it registers 160 degrees, and it's nicely thickened. That takes about 7 to 10 minutes. All right. Well, Julia mentioned that the beauty of this hollandaise sauce, it's not going to break, which means it won't separate into water and oil as we heat it. The reason is that we use softened butter instead of the traditional melted butter. Softened butter maintains its emulsified structure. With melted butter, the emulsion has already been broken, so it has to be re-emulsified by whipping it vigorously, and it won't hold for very long. So use softened butter for an easy and unbreakable hollandaise sauce. We're going to cook this until it reaches 160 degrees, and it happens fast. Ooh, doesn't that look good and velvety? Nice and thick. So off the heat this comes. Now it needs a little flavoring at this point because it just has butter and egg yolks, which is pretty delicious. Yeah, I don't mind that. <laughs> We're going to add a little bit of lemon juice. This is two teaspoons of lemon juice, a little bit of cayenne because that really brings the flavor out a long way. And I have to say, this version of hollandaise is so gentle that you can add all sorts of stuff to it. One of my favorite things is to add curry powder. Mm. It almost makes a curry hollandaise that's really oh, good yeah. for french fries or smoked paprika. We're going to leave it nice and simple this time, though. I'm going to season it with a little bit of salt. This is the kind of sauce that's so easy, you can just go crazy with it, and people are going to be so impressed. All right, so believe it or not, this hollandaise will hold perfectly well for several hours. So our hollandaise is resting comfortably, and it's time to poach some eggs. All right. Now, poaching eggs is pretty tricky when you think about it, because you're taking an egg, which cooks quickly and is fairly delicate, you're taking out its protective shell, you're dumping it into hot water, and the two things you want to cook perfectly, the whites and the yolk, cook at completely different rates. So it's tricky. It's a crapshoot. And there's lots of crazy methods out there. Of course, we tried them all. Cooking them in muffin tins in the oven totally didn't work. The ones on the outside cooked more quickly than the ones on the inside, and they didn't cook through evenly, so that was a bust. And another method that's popular on the internet is using your microwave with a little bit of water. Now, this sounds good. And after about 100 eggs, you might get the timing just perfectly for your own microwave. But if you try another microwave, it's not going to work. So that was a non-starter for us. There was one recipe that we found where you swirl the water into a pretty vortex that keeps the whites from spreading too much. Worked pretty well, but you could only do two eggs at a time. So if you're serving a crowd, it's not going to work too well. Very impractical. And then my favorite, which worked really well, is you take a spoon, two spoons actually, and you nestle the egg between them, and you lower it gently in the water, and you hold it there until the egg's cooked, and then you raise it out. Egg was perfect, but it was kind of a hassle. And can you imagine doing that with 12 eggs? Well, I mean, that kind of makes sense, because you're adding the shell back to the egg. Yeah, pretty much. So what we found is pretty remarkable. It actually has to do with the egg. Now, first, you want to use the freshest eggs possible. And that's because there are two types of whites, because really it's the whites that make a mess. 
there's the watery white that's on the outside, and then there's the thicker white. And the watery white, there's about 30 to 40% of the white is that watery white. And there's more of it as the egg gets older. So fresher eggs have less of that watery white. And so what we're doing now is I'm just putting these into a colander, and I'm letting that watery white drain away. But you can see the thicker white is staying behind. It's not going through the colander. So by getting rid of that watery bits, we're going to have less floaty bits in the water. And so you just want to crack the eggs into there and let them sit for about 20 to 30 seconds. Yeah, you can really see this thicker bit of the egg white right here, and the thinner part is draining away. Yeah, it's just sitting pretty. All right, now let's take a look at our water. So I have a Dutch oven here, and inside I have six cups of boiling water. Now, it's pretty common to add vinegar to your poaching liquid for eggs, and indeed, we're gonna add a tablespoon of vinegar. A lot of recipes we found added a lot more vinegar because the vinegar lowers the pH, which helps the whites coagulate better so there's less floody bits, but you can taste the vinegar after a mm -hmm. while. If you go much over a tablespoon, it's too much. We don't want pickled eggs. That's right, and I've tasted those from restaurants. It's kind of a bummer. Salt does a very similar thing. So we're gonna add a teaspoon of table salt. But again, you add too much salt, you get salty eggs. But a combination of the vinegar and the salt does it perfectly and you don't get too much of one flavor. All right, so our water's ready. Let's come back to our eggs. Now you can see all that watery bit that's drained away. Now I'm gonna- Definitely, I mean, can you guys see all that white that's drained away? About an eighth of a cup of yeah. egg whites in there. Yeah, so it really did the trick. Mm -hmm. And those are the egg whites that would float around and make a total mess inside the pot. Unacceptable. Unacceptable. All right, so we're gonna leave those behind, come back to our pot. Now I'm gonna turn the boiling water off and I'm gonna slowly add the eggs one at a time to different spots in the water. One. Slipping them in. Mm-hmm. So they have their own little area to cook. And you can see they're just resting gently on the bottom of the pot. All right, so we're gonna put the lid on. I'm gonna set a timer for three minutes and we'll be back. So it's been three minutes, time to look at our eggs. Oh, they look perfect. You can see those whites are just set and that's how you know they're done. Beautiful. Yeah, now here is the best part of all. This is a holding pot for poached eggs. Now it registers 150 degrees and you can hold poached eggs in there for up to 15 to 20 minutes. I mean, look at that. That is just a beautiful poached egg. That is the perfect poached egg Isn't right that? there. And so this is how you cook eggs in batches for a crowd. Isn't that amazing? That's really cool. And this is kind of a restaurant technique. Yeah. All right, we're gonna cover this, keep these guys warm. I'm gonna scoop out any last wispy whites. There are always a few. I'm gonna bring this water back to a boil so we can cook our second batch of eggs. In the meantime, we gotta talk about toast. Trying to toast these one at a time in a toaster oven, that would take too long. By the time the last one's done, the first one's gonna be way cold. So these English muffins are going under the broiler for about four minutes until they're nice and toasty. Then put the Canadian bacon on top and it's just under the broiler for another minute longer. And breakfast is oh, served, my darling. Nothing better than that smell. Oh, all right. Now I'm just gonna make us each a little half, because we'll come back to the rest later. Because we're dainty. <laughs> <laughs> and this holding water is just the best invention ever. I mean, it makes serving a poached egg on something like this so incredibly easy. So I'm just draining the excess water. Oh, look at that guy. Oh, he's quivering. You can he tell is perfect. Perfectly poached egg. A little of our hollandaise. The reason for living, I, I like to call it. I believe hollandaise is French for <laughs> sauce of life. <laughs> I'm going to definitely add a little black pepper to mine. The egg is, look at that, perfectly cooked. Yes. You never get that in a restaurant. It's crack open right oh. in that center. Mm. I want to shake the hand of the person who said, you know what these mm -hmm. poached eggs need? Mm -hmm. An egg sauce. The flavors of the hollandaise, I mean, it's a very delicate flavor but it tastes so good with the eggs mm. and the salty ham and the little bit of the English muffin. Mm. That hollandaise is beautifully buttery. Isn't it? But it's still really light. And like you said, it's kind of a blank canvas. You could add a lot of different flavors to it. I have to say though, that little bit of lemon juice is kind of perfect. Yeah, and just that little bit of cayenne. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's a good classic flavor. This is amazing and you're right, it is perfect for serving with a bunch of friends. Mm-hmm. For foolproof eggs, Benedict, make sure to use softened butter for a make-ahead hollandaise. Drain eggs and then poach them off heat in hot but not boiling water. Top broiled bacon and English muffins with the eggs, pour on the sauce, and of course, eat it with a friend. So from our test kitchen to your kitchen, a perfectly executed home version of Eggs Benedict. Also known as Eggs Benny. Hmm. Mm.
Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Thanks for watching America's Test Kitchen. What'd you think? Well, leave a comment and let us know which recipes you're excited to make, or you can just say hello. You can find links to today's recipes and reviews in the video description. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel. See you later. I'll see you later.